We're back after a week off. In the news this week, Adobe really, truly, finally kills Flash. We'll take a look at the agenda, which has just been released for the Ace Edit Fest LA. Bond 25 gets a release date. Will Daniel Craig return? Well, I'm not sure yet. Road drops a new video mic plus. We'll wrap up Comic Con. And here is the end of an era. We say goodbye to the iPod Nano and Shuffle. On iTunes, Stitcher and Anchor, this is Going Postal News. I'm Adam Bedford. Now, are you sitting comfortably? Good. Then we'll begin. I want the truth! Spoilers! It's pretty hard to load a website up these days without seeing some form of flash. Back in the 90s, it was everywhere. But since iOS refused to support it about 10 years ago, when the iPhone came out, the writing's kind of been on the wall. This week, Adobe finally got the hint. A quote from the Flash and Future of Interactive Content conference went on to say that, quote, given this progress and in collaboration with several of our technology partners, including Apple, Facebook, Google, Microsoft, and Mozilla, Adobe is planning to end-of-life Flash. Specifically, we will stop updating and distributing the Flash player at the end of 2020 and encourage content creators to migrate any existing Flash content to these open new formats. Let me just say, hallelujah and amen. It took 10 years and I guess another two more, but Flash is finally going the way of the dodo. So it looks like in the war of the web, HTML5 will be crowned king or queen or whatever. If you've got Flash on your website, you've got till 2020 to get rid of it. If you're a fan of Rode microphones and you've been eagerly awaiting their new Video Mic Pro Plus device, well, good news, it's now shipping. Rode announced the Video Mic Plus at the annual Rode Show in Las Vegas earlier this year. The Video Mic Pro Plus represents the latest upgrade of their Video Mic Pro platform, which now runs on rechargeable AA batteries that can be powered up without having to be taken out. Batteries take two hours to recharge and have a 100-hour battery life. Uh, The Video Mic Plus now also gets a phantom power option through micro USB, so you can connect it to an external source like a brick to record a little bit longer. Additionally, the Pro Plus now has auto power on and off, which gets engaged when the cables are connected and the camera power gets turned on, and then turns off when you remove the cables. This is great for shooters like me, who sometimes forget to turn the microphone off when they turn the camera off, and then you start shooting again to find out your battery's dead. So I guess this is an atom proof feature. The Rode VideoMic Pros are great for DSLR shooting, if you're shooting on a smaller device, like if you want to plug it into a GoPro or an iPhone, uh, things like that. Lots of run and gun shootings, great sound there. Uh, The VideoMic Pro Plus is now shipping through Rode.com or anywhere else you buy microphones, and it retails for $299 US. To find out more, check out Rode.com. If you're an editor who wants to take their game to the next level and meet some influential new people, networking's what it's all about, check out Edit Fest LA, Saturday, August 12th, so not too far away. And tickets are selling out pretty quickly for this as well. Ace released the uh, panel list and agenda for the, uh, the day this week with a panel dedicated to women making the cut with famous female editors like Lillian Benson and Virginia Katz, who worked on Beauty and the Beast recently in Dreamgirls, Edie Choker, who was up for an Oscar for The Box Trolls, and more talking about their personal experiences and challenges in the cutting room and in the industry. Other panels include Breaking Boundaries and the Lean Forward Moment. Breaking Boundaries is a panel of editors who were involved in game-changing movies. Now, what I mean by game-changing, like the first of something, like Robert Layton, who did This Is Spinal Tap, which was pretty much the world's first mockumentary. Blade was the first uh, modern Marvel superhero kind of film. Paul Rubell edited that, and he'll be there. And Stephen Rifkin, of course, who we know from James Cameron's Avatar. So editors of that caliber, and they'll be talking to our friend Michael Krulik from Avid. One of the highlights of Edit Fest every year is Bobby Osteen's panel Inside the Cutting Room, where she talks one-on-one with a particular editor about their entire career. And this year, Richard Chu, ACE, is who she'll be talking to. He's worked on films like uh, Risky Business, I Am Sam, The Conversation, and a little old film called Star Wars. 
So if you're a Star Wars fan, that's probably worth checking out too. And we mentioned before the Lean Forward moment, which is moderated by author of the Lean Forward moment and our friend Norman Holland. He'll be talking to uh, some TV editors from Breaking Bad and Better Call Saul, Kelly Dixon, Chris McCaleb, and from The X-Files and True Blood, Lynn Willingham. So that's an idea of the agenda. If you're an editor, an aspiring editor, somebody who wants to network, lift their game, whatever that is, you want to check this out. Uh, tickets are on sale, but there's not many left. You can go to AmericanCinemaEditors.org. Regular tickets are 220 for the day. Or if you uh, have a group of five friends, you can uh, all band together and get them for 175 So it's a, uh, a way to do that. Or you can go in for a discount ticket if you're an, a member of the Editors Guild or ACE, a student or an affiliate. I think we even have a, a promo code for going postal. You can get it for 125 all the info you need is on the website, and we'll be covering the event too for going postal, so we'll look forward to seeing you there. Well, it looks like the iPod Nano and iPod Shuffle have played their final notes for Apple. The company discontinued sales of the two music players this week in a move reflecting the waning popularity of these devices in an era where most people store or stream their music on your smartphone. The iPod product line still remains alive, although Apple plans to continue selling its internet-connected iPod Touch. In a show of its commitment to the iPod Touch, Apple doubled the storage capacity of its top-of-the-line model to 128 gigabytes, which costs 300 bucks. Right now, an iPod Touch with 32 sells for 200. I'm going to miss the Nano. I used to love the Nano. It was so small and cute. They came out in 2005 along with the Shuffle as a less expensive and smaller alternative to Apple's standard iPod. Apple has long predicted, though, that iPads would gradually fade away as more people bought iPhones or smarter smartphones capable of playing music. So it's an end of an era. It's a sad day. If you have a little iPod Nano or a Shuffle, hold on to it because it's now become an antique. And it's been announced James Bond will make his official return to the big screen in November 2019. Bond 25th, the as-yet untitled 25th film in the long-running franchise, will debut here in the U.S. on November 8th, 2019, Eon Productions and MGM said in a joint statement this week. The U.S. release follows the traditionally earlier release of the film in the U.K. and abroad. However, the studio has remained quiet about whether or not Daniel Craig is coming back to play James Bond. Craig infamously said a few years back that he would, quote, rather slash his wrists, unquote, than return to the part. However, the UK's Mirror newspaper reported earlier this month that Craig had decided to stay on for Bond 25 after hearing of the wealth of British talent eyed to replace him. A little bit of insecurity might have popped in there, perhaps? This would be the actor's fifth Bond flick since uh, 2006's Casino Royale. The studios have said that details on distribution, the film's cast, director, will be announced at a later date. Notice they didn't say plot. Well, James Bond films aren't known for their plots. And to wrap up, Comic-Con, the, uh, the worldwide mecca for nerds, came to an end this week, and uh, nerds and geeks alike returned to their homes or dimensions of residence. It's been a crazy week of news across the entertainment industry, but in recent years, the show has become just as much about the big trailer reveals for upcoming blockbusters as it has been about panels for fans and, you know, comic books. Most of the trailers have been put online. We've put a bunch onto our Facebook site and YouTube channel as well. So if you missed them, you can go to Going Postal Show on Facebook or YouTube and uh, find them there. Marvel may be keeping its trailer for Avengers Infinity War under wraps for a little while, but Thor Ragnarok looks like a fun film. It comes out in November and the Hulk can speak. On the DC side, Justice League coming off the success of Wonder Woman. The biggest question for DC going into Comic-Con was whether or not it could make lightning strike twice with their film Justice League. Looks like it may just might. It looks pretty good. The new trailer gives us our first look at the villain Steppenwolf. Really? Steppenwolf? I wonder if he's flying in on a magic carpet. Or showing some off the uh, superhero action you'd hope from a film from DC's biggest heroes. My second favorite trailer was Stranger Things Season 2. Netflix came to Comic-Con to play ball big time. The trailer for Stranger Things Season 2 was just amazing. Thriller scored, which really gave it that uh, supernatural 80s craziness. The next series of Stranger Things comes out on Netflix in October, just in time for Halloween. 
Here at Going Postal, we're looking forward to uh, Kingsman, The Golden Circle, which I think is the only movie that Ben, Monica, and I have actually agreed on in the entire time that we've done this show. Uh, Kingsman, The Golden Circle dropped their trailer at Comic-Con, and at their panel, Halle Berry chugged a pint of whiskey, which was awesome. The surprise hit panels for Comic-Con were Ready Player One and Star Trek Discovery. Ready Player One is Ernest Clyde's popular ode to the 80s, it's getting a big budget film directed by none other than Steven Spielberg. I've read the book to this, and it is amazing. I cannot wait to see how this film turns out. Warner Brothers took some time to give the fans the first look at the upcoming movie, which is deep in post-production. If you've read the book, you know the movie is a wall-to-wall nostalgia fest that's stuffed with action to boot. Now, the trailer was great. Because I read the book, although if you if I hadn't read the book, I think it would have been a little confusing. It just looked like a big mishmash of images with a DeLorean, the Iron Giant, and Freddy Krueger being blown to bits, which all in all isn't that bad. So I'm hoping the next trailer fleshes out the film a little more to those who haven't read the book yet. Our own Richard Daniel will do a full roundup of everything that happened at Comic-Con on the next edition of Going Postal. Until then, that is all for Going Postal News for Friday, July 28th. Have yourselves a fantastic weekend. Drop by our website, check us out, follow us on Twitter, Instagram, or Facebook, at Going Postal Show. And until then, we will see you next time. Bye-bye.